I am uh, Terry T.J. Jameson. I work for Boeing in the International Vertical Lift Sales. I'm a retired Army officer uh, of 32 years. I've flown the Apache for the last 10 of those years. And uh, my son actually flies the Apache in Afghanistan today. So I have a very long commitment to this aircraft. So we think as we look at the Polish security requirements and the threat in the environment that you have here today. We believe the Apache is the, the dominant capability that meets those requirements. Uh, this aircraft, as you know, was designed uh, during the Cold War to fight the threat that you face today in this environment on this type of battlefield. That aircraft has been continually modernized since uh, its first inception, first with the H-64A model, and then it went to the H-64D, and today we have the H-64E. So we've continued to modernize that aircraft to meet the threat that you have. The U.S. Army has committed to flying this aircraft all the way out to 2060 and beyond. So as you come on board with the H-64 Apache, you are tied with U.S. Army's modernization program to continue to maintain its dominance on the battlefield as the the threat evolves, so will this aircraft. What we like to say is this aircraft offers combat overmatch through a total integration of systems. So it's not just about this aircraft and the great capabilities it has, but its ability to integrate all the systems on the battlefield. And I'll talk about three of those real briefly. The first is onboard sensors. The onboard sensors of this aircraft are uh, the most dominant in the world. It's the only attack helicopter that is flying with a fire control radar and an RFI or radar inferometer uh, that that actually works together hand in hand and has the ability to locate, identify, prioritize targets, and then assign a munition for each one of those targets, not only to its own aircraft, but to its sister aircraft that are operating within its flight. So that's the first onboard sensor we have. The second onboard sensor we have is the MTADS, uh, which is the site, the site sensor laser. It's got an integrated laser. It has uh, thermal imaging, day color sight, the ability to locate targets. I was first exposed to the modernized MTADS in 2008 in Iraq, and it was an absolute game changer in that fight as we were able to identify and locate targets well beyond the range of munition systems, well beyond the range of the enemy's ability to detect you. Uh, so those are the two primary onboard sensors we have. The offboard sensors that this aircraft utilizes are manned unmanned teaming or MUM-T uh, for UAS systems. It has the ability to talk and receive the video feed that the UAS is looking at out in front of the aircraft. Uh, it then brings that video feed into the cockpit and we can now push that video feed out to other forces, ground forces, so to ensure everybody on the battlefield has that same operating picture. So the, the, the last offboard center I'll discuss is Link 16, which Poland is very familiar with. You've been using for a period of time. Link 16 now brings in the entire joint fires network. Your F-16s are integrated into Link 16, and it gives everybody that common operating picture on the battlefield and is the ability to push our our operating picture out and pull in the ground components picture. So total integration uh, in a combined arms uh, environment working with the ground maneuver force. The last aspect I'll talk about of total integration is interoperability. So as we played out several war games, th actually three war games in the last 18 months here in Poland, we demonstrated interoperability. What I mean by that is when you are fighting as part of a coalition with allies who have the same aircraft, the same platform, platform is, is you makes a significant difference on the battlefield because through interoperability now not only do you have common tactics techniques and procedures but you also have the ability to take advantage of the sustainment and logistics trail of your fellow partners and allies on the battlefield imagine for an instance uh, for an instant the united kingdom the dutch the united states and poland all having the same platform and the ability to land in a dutch 
rearm, re, re, refuel point, a U.S. base or uh, a, a U.K. base and be able to have maintenance, rearm, refuel all done on your aircraft. Think about what that does from a planning perspective for your planners as they have to plan the fight and, 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 and per, develop a plan against the threat that you face today. So industrial cooperation, uh, Boeing is the largest aerospace company in the world. One of the reasons Boeing is such a strong company is our ability to work with international worldwide customers because everybody has different strengths and the ability to tap into those strengths that the Polish industry bring uh, to contribute to make us stronger benefits all.